Welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report, the only show that provides you with the best insight and information to everything Franklin County sports. And now here's your host, Bobby C. Hello and welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. I want to welcome you here today. Yes, we're excited. It's tournament time and the teams are all set up for their seedings. We're going to run through the whole thing here on the show today. We're also going to talk about what happened with the week leading up to tournament on some of the teams that made it in and some of the teams that were unfortunate and did not. Well, one of the sad parts of last week was the fact that the Athol Red Raiders ended up doing what they needed to do to knock off the Mohawk Warriors, and they took the Lady Softball team out of playoff contention. Earlier this year, Mohawk was able to beat Athol. Final score was 7-6, but this time it was 6-4 Athol, and with that win, they ended up knocking Ath uh, Mar I mean, uh, they ended up knocking Mohawk out of the playoffs, which is very unfortunate. You know, we look back and we talk about how some of these teams did this year. There were some of the teams that were so hot coming down the stretch, but they had such a really rough start during the year that it ended up affecting them. And another team that was affected by that was the Pioneer Girls. They unfortunately did not make playoffs either. And the reason why they didn't make playoffs is because of the struggle they had earlier in the year, not the struggle down the stretch. They honestly played very well. And with a couple of big victories that they were able to get, it still wasn't enough as they ended up with nine wins on the season where you needed the 10. They were one game away from making it to the playoffs and probably going in as one of the hotter teams with great pitching by Steph Scoble. Steph has been on fire over the last couple of weeks. She's been able to dominate in the circle. She's also done well at the plate as well. Some of her teammates started to hit, and things were starting to really get better for this program. And poor Tina Riddell has done such a wonderful job with the team. And to know that her team was just one win away from making it to tournament and being as hot as they were going in is a big disappointment to not only the coach, but also to the kids and their families too. And I just want to say that a huge congratulations goes out to them on the great run that they had, especially near the end of the season, and really the great job that Steph Scoble was able to do. Tell you right now, she is an excellent pitcher and a lot of talent right there, and she really proved why she was becoming one of the better pitchers here in the area. And right now, I will honestly tell you that she is definitely in the top three. You know, I look at who our top pitchers are here in the Franklin County area, and you got to say, Steph Scoble is one of them. Of course, I'm going to give Jade Tyler number one. Um, and then in Franklin County, I'd say that it's going to be a toss-up between her and Olivia Joy, Steph Scoble. But I think that uh, Steph Scoble definitely has been a little more effective this season down the stretch than Olivia Joy. But that doesn't take anything away from what she's been able to do in the circle for Greenfield. Another really good team here in the playoffs as well. Of course, uh, we're going to talk about those seedings, but I just wanted to say it was so sad to see that two of the teams here in the area just came up short and one game away from being able to make it into playoff contention, and those were two softball teams, one at Mohawk and one at Pioneer. I want to thank our underwriters here today, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Burniston, also by Denny's Pantry, Burniston Road in Greenfield, Sean Hubert and the staff over at Hubie's, their tavern and restaurant, Avenue Way in Turner's Falls, and by Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. They have been with us since the beginning, and we appreciate everything that they've done, and I hope you can get out and support these local folks that are supporting these kids. You know... Pioneer ended up having a big win last week. They knocked off South Hadley 19 to 1. Then they ended up having a really nice victory that they had over Athol. They ended up beating Mahar. I mean, this team really started to have a great stretch run. And I just feel so bad that they weren't able to make playoffs. But just want to say that really some kids did a great job. And one of the girls that I want to recognize who really has been able to be a big part of the sports scene over at Pioneer is Olivia Rowe. Now, Olivia Rowe is leaving. She's a senior. She was a wonderful 
basketball player for their basketball team. You know, they put her out there in center field to be able to play center. She did a lot of first base a lot during her years of playing softball. You know, even playing volleyball, she even had a year of playing some field hockey as well. So always busy was Olivia Rowe. She just got honored as one of the top basketball players in the whole Western Mass area at a special gathering that they had. So a huge congratulations goes out to Liv for everything that she's been able to do and the contribution that she's been able to give to her school up at Pioneer Valley Regional. You know, you look back last week and you say, who are the hot teams going into playoffs? Well, the hot baseball team, no doubt, is the Greenfield Green Wave. You know, they have been on fire. Matter of fact, going into tournament play this week, they are on an eight-game winning streak. And I'll tell you what, it's because of three things. It's because they've been able to play really good defense, their pitching has been fantastic, and they've been able to get some timely hitting from other guys than what they had last season. Last season, they really struggled from the plate, lost a lot of really close one-run games. Well, this year, they've been able to make a difference. You know, they got guys on that team that have been able to get it done, and a few of those seniors that are on this team have been a huge asset to them and is going to be a big help for them here in the postseason. And if they're going to want to go far, they're going to have to rely on a few of these guys. You know, you look at who the seniors are. You got their third baseman, Cam Baird. Excellent job at third base. He's been able to hit the ball really well. Very good defense there on the hot corner. Also, one of the guys who's been able to get it done at the mound, their number one pitcher in Owen Phelps. Uh, Owen Phelps has been able to really get things done this year. His number two, the nice curveball, has been able to work well for him. You know, between him, Joel Peabody, and also Kyle Devlin, they've been able to really get things done. And the green wave is on a roll right now. Another senior who's been able to hit the ball so well, plays a wonderful first base, is Hunter Campbell. Hunter Campbell is really having a great season. He's batting over 500 this year as a senior. He's getting ready to go to Colby Sawyer to play baseball up in New Hampshire. Owen Phelps will be playing over at Pine Manor down in Boston next year. Uh, another senior is Nate Hazelton. Nate plays right field, very fast. His bat hasn't been so good right now, but they're hoping that it'll come around during the playoff run here. But he is getting ready to go into the service. So really, they're losing a few guys, but they also have many good, talented kids that are coming back. You know, you think about who they have. They got Devlin that, you know, is also graduating too. And it's pretty amazing to see how these kids have grown up so fast and that they're, they're all done. But, you know, Devlin's had a great year, too. He's been able to pitch well, uh, plays an awesome catcher, throws a bullet down to second base when runners are trying to steal, and he's been able to get a lot of putouts behind the plate. So, really, this is a very good team. They also have younger kids that have been able to step it up, too. They got kids like Jake Sack, and they have another kid like Ryan Cody, who's going to be coming back to play for them. Of course, Peabody will be back. They're also going to be able to have um, Jared Hart will be back playing shortstop. So they have some kids that are going to be able to come and perform and good younger talent that's coming up too for this Greenfield team. And we'll talk about where they landed in their seedings in just a little bit. You know, another team that got pretty hot down the stretch and they ended up making a move is the Franklin County Tech School. And with the Franklin County Tech doing as well as they did, they ended up getting a pretty decent seed. And we'll talk about a local team that they're going to play against that has a, been able to make the tournament too. You know, the Pioneer Boys team, you really think about them, they're very young. They have a very young baseball team. But they have a bunch of kids that have been able to play together for the last four or five years, which is going to make it as a good asset for their program. And they have been able to get in due to the Sullivan rule, which means that if you're playing a tougher schedule against teams that are a higher division than you, then you only have to win 500% of the games that you play against the teams that are in the same division as you. 
For an example, if you're playing a 14-game schedule of teams that are above, that means that you only have six teams that you end up playing that are in your division on your schedule. Well, if you win 50% of those six, you only have to win three, you're automatically in the playoffs no matter what. And the cool thing is, is because of the Sullivan rule, it really gives the teams an opportunity to be able to be rewarded for playing a tougher schedule. And we'll see if that paid off for Pioneer in their seedings. We'll talk about that as we get into our show here today. You know, one of the teams that really struggled on the softball diamond this year that won't be in is Mahar. The Mahar girls will not be in. The Franklin County Tech girls will not be in. And also, like we said, Mohawk and Pioneer didn't make it as well. So sadly enough, here in Franklin County, we only had three of our local teams that we carry on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report that are going to make it in. And that'll be Greenfield, Frontier, and Turner's Falls. Now, Turner's Falls, they will be going in as a Division IV team. And for Division III, it will be Greenfield, also Frontier. So they'll be in the same division, but Turner's will be in the fourth division. I want to let you know that when you really think about how some of these teams have been able to do throughout the year, they've also been able to take on some really hot teams that are also in the area too. You know, one of the teams that has played really well and I know is going to get an amazing seed is Hampshire Regional. They have a wonderful eighth grader who is just an amazing pitcher. And I will say this about Joss. Joss Meddy is a really talented girl. She's only an eighth grader. She's very well built. She's very strong. And she has been able to really throw lights out this season for Hampshire Regional. You know, they had a chance to take on Turner's Falls last week. It was a great tune-up game for both of these teams. And I'll tell you right now, this girl from eighth grade from Hampshire Regional had a no-hitter against Turner's. But Turner's won on an error. They ended up winning on an error that ended up costing Hampshire the win. And Turner's pulled off a 1-0 victory last week against Hampshire Regional. The game was played over in Turner's Falls. I had a chance to be a part of that. And watching this eighth grader be able to do what she does has been pretty special. And for her to be able to throw a no-hitter against the top team in our area for Division Four was pretty special. And think about this. You know, you really think about Turner's Falls and what they have for weapons and how strong they've been able to be with their bats. They've been on a little bit of a skid over the last three weeks. Really, if you think about it, they were lights out at the beginning of the year, hitting the ball hard, a lot of really nice opportunities for a lot of runs to be scored. Hasn't really been that way over the last couple of weeks. And of course, that's something that Gary Mullins doesn't want to see going into postseason play. You know, I don't think that they're going to have much of a problem getting through Western Mass. I think that they should have an easy ride through. And we'll talk about them in just a moment. You know, another team that's been able to really do well is in tennis. The boys tennis team and the girls tennis team from Greenfield. The boys tennis team from Turner's Falls doing well. Well, they ended up having the first round is beginning this week for tennis. And there was a game that was played between Frontier. They have a girls team, but they also have a boy who's part of their program. And they have decided that over the last couple of years that they are going to compete in the boys tennis championship, not the girls. And by doing that, they're able to be able to have the opportunity to keep this boy on their team. What it is, if you have a boy on your team, you have to play in the boys tournament. If you don't have a boy, you can be able to play in the girls tournament. But because this gentleman is part of the team, they decided as a whole down at Frontier that they were going to be able to keep this uh, team to be able to play in playoff play in the boys division. Well, this team of girls and this boy were able to come up and take on Greenfield. And Greenfield walked away with a 4-1 victory. So they get to move on to the next round in the tennis tournament. So congratulations goes out to the Green Wave on their first tournament win of the year. And also, I will say that Turner's Falls 
they ended up winning their division and they will be getting ready for an upcoming match that they have this week as well. On the girls' side, the girls from Greenfield, they are going to have their first round matchup this week in the playoffs. They are going to take on Mount Greylock, and they ended up with a very good seed, so they will be able to host Mount Greylock over at the courts over at Davis Street this week. So congratulations to the girls from Greenfield. Coach Silk must be very pleased with the way her ladies are playing this season. You know, as I flip through my paperwork here and I take a peek at some of these, I look at some of the kids who have been able to be shining stars for some of these different athletic teams. You know, one of the shining stars that I've been very impressed with are some of the stars that we see in track and field. You know, you look back and you say to yourself, wow, we have some really good talented kids here in our area for track and field. Well, one of the girls who's been a true star and a wonderful young lady getting ready for her years in college is Megan Davis from Moha Trail Regional. She ended up getting in to the tournament for the Central Western Mass Championships that they had, and she ended up struggling a little bit. But, you know, I always say that we also have bad days. You look at the majority of the days that she's run to some of the days that she hasn't done well, and let me tell you, there's a huge gap between that. And what I mean by that is, is that there's a huge gap in the fact that she normally is on her game almost all the time. You know, it really does happen. Sometimes there is a week where you end up getting out there and running your track meet or you end up running in your cross country meet and you don't do as well as you did. But this woman has worked so hard. You think about the foothills of where she lives up in Plainfield. You know, that's way up on the top of the mountain. And she runs those country roads and was able to stay focused and really be able to put herself into a mode that most kids would love to be in. And I just want to say that the career that she had at Mohawk Trail Regional was so exceptional. And to be able to be known as a national runner, that is just amazing to me. You know, a girl from literally down the road is a national known runner for high school sports. And that, my friends, is Megan Davis from Mohawk Trail Regional High School. And I just want to say we want to send out kudos to her for the unbelievable career that she has had. You know, you talk about some of the other kids who've been able to do some special things. There's a kid down at Frontier, Jack Facilio. He's done some pretty cool things. You know, you look back and you say to yourself, wow, you got Koski down there. You got Jackie Frong down there. These guys have been able to really do well in track and field too. You know, you look at the cross country team down at Frontier, they had a huge year. Alex Sharp and guys like Karsten Carey and these kids just did an amazing job being able to win championships and to be able to bring home a lot of hardware as one of the top teams for track and field and cross country in all of Western Massachusetts and beyond. So congratulations to them. You know, there's a kid up at Pioneer named Scott McDonough. Wow, this kid is a very talented kid. Unfortunately though, he really hasn't really had a lot of extra backing from his program to be able to be competitive against some of these bigger and stronger schools we have like Mohawk and Frontier and also really Mahar and Athol are pretty good too. But if you really think about it, this kid has been solid against every one of these programs. He's been able to compete year after year and still be one of the top guys in our area. So a huge congratulations goes out to a wonderful career for Scott McDonough from Pioneer. You know, I look at some of the other kids that have done well and the girls, I look at the girl Marin from Greenfield. She has had a wonderful career. She's done an excellent job. She's only a sophomore, very young. You know, who thinks that some of these kids, they come up when they're in eighth grade and still make noise. And then by the time they're, you know, the age of Megan Davis and you say to yourself, wow, 
you know, they started so young, but look at what they were able to achieve. Well, I think she's going to be one of those kids who's been able to achieve. You know, from Greenfield, they got a couple of guys who've been able to get it done. You know, Crescens, he's been excellent. What about Teddy Pop? You know, these two kids have been excellent for the Greenfield Green Wave and was able to do well in track and field. And they also are very, very involved in being able to help their team, too. They have a beautiful new track over there at GHS. And it's funny because I like to go and have a coffee break every day. I usually take a coffee break. And when I do that, I usually stop and park over there by the back of the field. And I see many of these high school kids that are running and training and getting themselves prepared for these opportunities to be able to compete in these Western Mass and also these Central Western Mass and State Championships. So these kids that have been able to make it have worked very hard. You know, you look and you say to yourself, wow, you know, where did the year go? You know, the year has really gone by. And now that we're in the playoffs that's starting this week, we are literally winding down another high school season. And as I look back and I think about some of the things that have happened this year, there's some pretty amazing stories. And we've had so many kids that have been able to hit milestones that we've talked about here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. And by the way, our local underwriters have been a big help too. The Four Leaf Clover Restaurant, Denny's Pantry in Greenfield, Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, and also by Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant over there on Avenue A in Turner's Falls. You know, and my producer, Philippe Simone and John Meisner, they've been excellent to be able to help us out. We started the new game of the week, which has been very exciting, which by the way, we will be having the game of the week that you'll be able to enjoy. So make sure you look for it. It's gonna be Greenfield versus Marhar Boys. That game will be played this week and it's a playoff matchup in Greenfield and you can enjoy it right here on GCTV, and we want to thank our crew for making this happen. Yeah, I was just uh, thinking of the year, and I'm like, wow, you know, we had some really cool milestones. You know, one of the milestones that really catch me, catches my eye is the fact that I was able to see a very talented Franklin County Tech soccer team with a combination of kids from Greenfield, and, I mean, from Turner's and from the Franklin County Tech School to do what they were able to do. And then to find out because of the two schools merging, they end up playing a division four schedule and then they ended up only competing in division three, which made it very tough for them to be able to go up against schools that they never normally played against, which made it very tough for that school. You know, another thing that we were able to enjoy is watching some of the milestones like we always do, like this year with football. You know, you say to yourself, man, you know, the football programs around here. Well, you got the Turner's Falls football team. You know, that's a team that's been sitting there waiting to find out if they were even gonna be able to continue or not. They have a kid who runs for 2,000 yards in Wyatt Keith, and then Greenfield has a kid who runs for 2,000 yards at their school in Bird. And you say to yourself, what? Two 2,000 yard runners that are on two different teams here in Franklin County. 2,000 yards, both these guys did this year. Pretty impressive. You know, you think about some of the other big things. You got the that great um, golf team from Frontier had an amazing run this season. What about that volleyball team at Frontier? What they were able to do. You know, the basketball team at Frontier and that basketball team at GHS, that girls basketball team that everybody loves to watch and what they were able to achieve. What about that awesome field hockey team at Greenfield High School under Aaron Thayer, who just competes week after week. You got a hockey team that went up against a very tough Belchertown team, but we're only one win away from an opportunity at going for another championship. 
So when you really think about what we've been able to do and what we've been able to achieve, I guess it's been a pretty darn good year for Franklin County sports. And it's all because of the hard work and the dedication that these kids have put in. But not only them, how about the dedication that's put in by the parents? The dedication that's put in by the coaches? The dedication that's put in by the community that is there to support these kids and shows up and watches them and cheers them on each and every night. This is what makes high school athletics so special. You know, when someone asked me, you know, what made you think about wanting to do the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report? And I said, you know, it comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to one, being able to recognize these kids for their achievements. And also, it's an opportunity to be able to put some good programming on local access television. And I think that we're able to be able to get people to know more about local access television by being able to have shows like this. And it gets people to be able to see what we do, how we do it, the support we get, and the commitment that we're making to do this for the kids. You know, you really think about it, this is not a monthly show. This is not a every three month show. It's an every week show. We do this every week throughout the year. Even though we don't have high school sports during the summer, well, we try to get interviews with a bunch of these athletes. We also try to raise awareness about concussions, sportsmanship. We talk about these Legion teams that are all high school athletes that are playing on the top baseball team or these softball programs that they have that are getting into big tournaments during the summer. So we keep busy all year long. And we do this as a huge commitment to the kids of our community. Well, as I get ready to get you guys into where everything is rolled with the pairings of the upcoming tournament, I just want to tell you all that we've been very blessed to be able to have such a good, good group of young athletes. And I, as I look and I see these pairings, I say to myself, they did a really good job, the committee, on being able to give these seatings the way they did. And let's run it down for you on who's in, okay? And then we can talk seatings. Okay, over the last 10 years, Greenfield Baseball has been in nine times. Frontier Baseball, over the last 10 years, has been in the tournament nine times. Turner's Falls, over the last 10 years, has been in the tournament seven times. Pioneer Boys Baseball, over the last 10 years, has been in six. Mohawk has been in six. And the Franklin County Tech School, over the last 10 years, they've been in three times. You know, some of these teams, like I said, they made it in through the Sullivan Rule, but some of them got really good seedings due to the strength of schedule. So let's start off by talking softball. Softball, Western Mass Division II tournament. The number one seed goes to Hampshire Regional with a record of 15 and five, very big strength of schedule. East Hampton, girls, number two at 18 and two. Then it goes Hoosick Valley, Greenfield gets the four seed in the Western Mass Tournament. With that said, they got a bye in the first round and they will have their first game. That'll be next Monday against Wakona High School, five o'clock over at Greenfield, at Vets Field at Greenfield High School. So a five o'clock game next Monday, Greenfield versus Wakona, a quarterfinal game the winner will take on, most likely, Hampshire Regional. If Greenfield does win that, they ended up losing to Hampshire Regional earlier this season. The Frontier Girls, they ended up with a, se a seven seed in Division II. They end up with a first round game. 
that uh, they're going to play this week. They'll take on Belchertown. And if they win, they will take on East Hampton in a game that will be played Monday at 4 p.m. So if they win their game this week against Belchertown, the Frontier Lady Red Hawks will take on number two, East Hampton, in a quarterfinal matchup at 4 o'clock down at East Hampton on Monday. So there you have it. In Division II, girls softball, we have two teams, Greenfield and Frontier. All right, we have the girls, and it's very simple, folks. We have one girls softball team in Division III. That is Turner's Falls. They ended up with the number one seed, of course. They not only got a first round bye, but they also have their home game, which will be played It'll be this Sunday, the winner of Gateway and Smith Academy. So Smith Academy has an opportunity to be able to take on Turner's on a Sunday night game, 7 o'clock, over at the complex at Turner's Falls High School. So if you're a big fan of Turner's Falls softball, make sure you put it. It's going to be a beautiful weekend this weekend. Get out and support the Lady Thunder. They are in. Number one seed, they'll play 7 o'clock Sunday, the winner of Gateway and Smith Academy. Well, in boys baseball, in Division Four, we have three teams that made it in. And that is the Turner's Falls boys. They will be the number seven seed. The Pioneer Valley Regional boys are seeded number eight. And the Franklin County Tech boys are seated number nine. Now, first round matchup. We have a game. It's going to be fun. It's Pioneer Boys versus the Franklin County Tech. That's right. These two teams are going to battle it out as a first round. The good news is we're going to definitely have one of our three teams that will get on to the next round, but they're going to take on number one seeded Ware who's had a very solid season this year at 17 and three. So number eight, Pioneer will host number nine, the Franklin County Tech in a first round matchup game that they'll play this week. Turner's Falls, they ended up with a home game. They'll take on Lee High School. If they win, they're gonna take on number two seeded Hopkins Academy. Well, earlier this year, Hopkins Academy went to Turner's Falls and got beat by the Thunder. So if Turner's Falls can pick up the win against Lee and maybe an upset against Hopkins, they could get down to good old Lord and Field for the semifinals in Division Four. But they still have to take care of business and they have to take on that team out from the Berkshires, Lee High School, that same team that ended up beating them in basketball in the tournament this past winter. Well, in Division Three baseball, we have three teams that are in. It's the Frontier Boys, the Greenfield Boys, and the Mohawk Boys. I could tell you right now that Mohawk is definitely on the road. They're the number 14 seed. They'll take on number three seeded Wakona in a first round matchup out there at Wakona High School can tell you that Frontier ended up with a two seed, 17 and three record. They have an easy draw against Putnam. That game will be played at Frontier for the first round. But we have a pretty cool first round matchup of a couple of locals here in our area as Greenfield, the number four seed, will take on Marhar Regional, the number 13 seed, in a game that will be played later this week on Friday a Friday night game at 7 o'clock under the lights. It will be our game of the week here on Greenfield Community Access Television. That's right. We will have this game for you as our game of the week live from Greenfield High School. And we'll be able to get this out for you guys for the beginning of next week so you can enjoy this playoff game against a team that has really been hot. Marhar has a tall task as they got to take on a team in Greenfield that has won eight games in a row, eight-game winning streak going into the playoffs for the Greenfield 
Green Wave. Once again, that game will be Friday night at 7 o'clock at GHS. So we want to wish the best of luck to all our tournament teams. So there you have it. We have plenty of tournament action that's going on. We have the girls that are getting ready for softball, the boys for baseball. The tennis team has already got their tournament started. Greenfield boys already picked up a win already. And then we talked about the fact that we have a wonderful, uh, really good track program at Frontier and Mohawk and some of these other schools that have brought out some really great talents like Greenfield bringing out Crescens and Teddy Pop and Scott McDonough from Pioneer. I mean, these kids have all worked so hard and they have all been rewarded by what they've been able to achieve this spring. You know, I look back and I say, this was probably the worst spring weather-wise that we've had in a long time. The only nice thing is, is that we're sitting here in June right now, almost ready for summer. The first official day of summer comes up on June 21st, so we're almost there. But if you look at everybody's lawns, they're lush, they're green, looks really nice. But the bottom line is, is that we've had so much moisture over the spring that that is why everybody's grass looks so nice. But you know what I always say, kids around here, they like it warm in the summer because they don't get a lot of that. So they're looking forward to being able to swim, being able to go tubing, being able to do all those fun things that they like to do during the summer. So when we come back and talk about our show next week, we'll talk about the winners, we'll talk about where they're going next, and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little nice spread on what we like to call the future of Franklin County sports. What I mean by that is we're gonna talk about some of the middle school teams on what they were able to achieve and how well their programs have been on what's gonna happen for the future of these high schools with these kids in sports. And then once we talk about that, we'll also talk of the flip side of it. Will the kids still play the high school level sports like they did in middle school? That will be a topic of our discussion with our tournament updates next week here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. Well, as you know, we finally are winding it down. We have finally hit our wall, as we say, for the end of the school year you know the kids are out of school in a couple of weeks but right now it's all about tournament time you survive you move on you lose you're out your summer begins so let's root on our local teams get out there and support them check out the local listings in the local paper to find out where these games are and who these kids are being able to play against want other details Go to the MIAA website at MIAA.org and you'll be able to get all the information that you need. That's MIAA.org and get all the information that you need on their website. You'll be able to get all the tournament action. Until we meet again next week, I'm Bobby C. For Philippe Simone and John Meisner, thank you so much for tuning in to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. And we want to thank one more time our underwriters, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Bernston, Denny's Pantry, Bernston Road in Greenfield, Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield, and by Sean Hubert of Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant, Avenue A in Turner's Falls. Have a great week, everyone. And don't forget, the game of the week it's Greenfield versus Mahar. We will have that for you. Make sure you look for it at the beginning of next week to be able to view it, enjoy it, and hopefully we'll be able to see a big victory for the Greenfield Green Wave boys baseball team. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for watching the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report on GCTV. Catch a game and be sure to join us next time for more sports and fun.